My name is William Justice. I've been exploring DaVinci Resolve, having a lot of fun, and making videos about what I learned. So the other day I was watching TV and I saw this really cool grid block transition effect. I wanted to see if this is something that I could do in Resolve and Fusion, so I uh, opened up Resolve, spent a few minutes, and got the basic effect set up. It wasn't too difficult. This effect is designed for DaVinci Resolve 17 and above. Once I had the basic effect set up, I decided to go ahead and make a Fusion transition out of it so that it was really easy and it's something that you could download and use in your projects. Um, you can download it from my website, buildjustice.com. But it's not perfect, which is okay. There's a little bit of a problem. It's kind of a minor display issue that happens sometimes, and I wanna see if you can spot it. I'm gonna talk about it later and I'll tell you exactly what it is toward the end of this video. If you spot it before then and you think you know why it's happening, let me know. Here's a quick sample of some of the different kinds of things you can do with uh, this transition. After I show you how to use and customize the effect, I'll show you how to download and install it to, into Resolve so you can use it in your projects. And then we're gonna jump into Fusion. I'm gonna show you the basics of how the effect is set up and how it works. If you enjoy my videos and wanna learn more about DaVinci Resolve, video editing, or effects, subscribe to my channel. Make sure you like this video, and if you have any comments or questions, uh, just let me know down below. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, so let's take a look at the transition and how to customize it. So let's click on Effects Library and Video Transitions. We can scroll down. You'll see just Grid Transition. You can also click the uh, search icon up here and type it in. It'll find it for you. Let's take it and drag it right in between those two clips. Let's see what we get by default. To customize it, we click on the transition here in the timeline and take a look in the inspector. So the first thing you'll see is we have uh, versions. So there's six versions or presets up here. Um, these are six different effects that you can quickly use. Let me show you what each of those looks like and then we'll go through the configuration options. Okay, let's get into the options. The first option is the grid size, and this is this uh, block column. So we can, right now it's set to 30, so we can make it bigger by stretching that out, or smaller by bringing it down. So if you want uh, bigger blocks, make this number smaller. Grid width is the width of the grid lines. Grid alpha is how transparent they are. So if you want them completely solid, you can bring that up. If you don't want to see the grid at all, you can take the grid alpha and bring it all the way down. Then you'll notice that as we this transition goes, the blocks are kind of fading in. If you take the block fade in and bring it down, they're just gonna pop, pop in without fading. And block roundness is kind of how round each of these are. So if we bring that all the way up, you're gonna get more of a rounded effect on the transition. Okay, next we're gonna take a look at color. So right here, there's a colors tab. So you notice that sometimes the transition um, changed the color, and this is kind of useful if you have two images that don't have a lot of contrast. Sometimes it's hard to see where the blocks are coming in. Adding some color kind of gives it a nice effect. So let's click colors. You can change the color of the grid. So if we wanted the grid to be black, we can change that really any color you want. We can change the color of each of the images. So right now it's, we got blue and red, but you're not seeing it and that's because color alpha is zero. So if we bring color alpha all the way up, you'll see that they're gonna go um, to full color. And this is where you can change the apply mode to kind of get some different effects. Okay, so the last section here is this color mix speed. This is how quickly the color mixes in. So if we set it to zero, the color is gonna come on immediately like that. If we set it all the way to one, it's the color is gonna blend in a lot more slowly and it's gonna get to one kind of right more right in the middle of the animation. Okay, so that's the colors. Let's go back to controls and take a look, look at pattern. Now pattern, this is our pattern that we're gonna be using for the transition. And this is really all the controls you get in a fast noise. And when I dive into fusion, I'm gonna go into a little more detail on what you can do with the patterns, but I'm just show you real quick. Um, there's a live view and a pattern view, so you can actually see the fast noise. And these are the fast noise controls, detail, contrast, and brightness. Contrast is gonna make it a little more random and bring down the contrast, you're gonna have a little bit cleaner line where the transition is going. You can actually change the uh, the seeth rate, which kind of gives an interesting effect because it's gonna cause the pattern to change during the transition. You can see we have blocks coming in and out as, as opposed to a more of a static transition. So this is where we can get into some interesting stuff in this gradient type. Right now it's a linear gradient. If we go to the pattern, you can see it's going from black to white there. You can see what the contrast does. It makes it a little smoother. If you wanted this to go in a different direction, all you need to do is change the gradient. So let's go over to here and enable the fusion overlay. And you'll see we have this line here. We can take this 
and move the line around if we want it to go top to bottom. We take the top of the line, the top point and bring it up and the bottom point and bring it down. And we've effectively changed the transition to go down now. So with the gradient type, we can actually change the pattern. So if we wanted the uni, that's just gonna be a random pattern. Okay, so in the transform area, we could use this transform to animate some things and kind of move the grid around or even adjust the size and have it animate in and out and adjust the angle or potentially the aspect. So this just kind of allows you to get some different looks. To download the grid transition, you can click the link in the description of this video, or you can go to my website, buildjustice.com. Click the download button, click get this, and this is the download screen. It's gonna ask you to enter a fair price for the just grid transition, enter your name, email address, and then you'll be able to download it. If you wanna enter a zero in this box, that's perfectly fine. It is a free download and I hope you make some great videos with the transition. If you do wanna support the channel, I would really appreciate it. A lot of you have been very generous with my other downloads and the Buy Me A Coffee page, so I thought I'd try something a little bit different here. Free download, or if you want to contribute a little bit, I would really appreciate it. Once, once you've entered the uh, price, your name and email address, go ahead and click pay, and then you can download it. And you're gonna get a zip file with the transition. To get this installed, let's open up this zip file and copy the files into a specific location in Resolve. We have our zip file open. Let's go into the Just Grid transition. Let's copy this into Resolve. Click Fusion, Effects Library, Edit Templates, choose Transitions, click these three dots, and then Show Folder. Copy the Just Grid transition.setting into the Edit Transitions folder. Okay, let me show you how I set up the grid transition. We're gonna talk a little bit about how to customize it. And then I'm gonna show you how to set up the dynamic grid with a few expressions. We're gonna talk about the magic of the dissolve node combined with a little bit of fast noise. Okay, let's start creating this effect. We're gonna take uh, our first video and drag it into the node area and second video and drag it into the node area. The first video is kind of a, a water scene during the day. Second video is kind of a sunset. So what we're gonna do is transition between the day scene to the sunset scene. To do that, we're gonna use a dissolve node. So with media in one, select to take control space and search for dissolve. Then we're gonna take media in two and put it into the foreground of the dissolve. And we'll hit uh, select dissolve and hit two on the keyboard so we can see it. What the dissolve does is it allows us to transition between these two inputs. So right now it's showing the foreground. And if we slide this back, it's gonna show the background. So this allows us to transition between these two images. The dissolve has several different modes. There's a random dissolve that kind of has a noise looking thing. A lot of different stuff in there, but we're gonna use the gradient wipe. So for the gradient wipe to work, we need a map input. And really the map is just a black and white image that tells the dissolve when to transition different parts of the image. So let's get a background in here. We're gonna start simple, take the background and connect it up to the map. The background right now, let's put it in the viewer, is solid black. And what we're gonna use is a gradient. So we'll go to the background type and select gradient. And we have a black and white gradient. So it goes from black to white. Now let's see what happens with the dissolve. We'll go to the dissolve. We're gonna move it all the way to the background. And when we slide it forward, you see that there's a transition in here where it's going from the darker part to the whiter part. The darker part of the image is gonna transition first and the whiter part is gonna transition last. And we're gonna adjust our gradient. So let's grab this point here and we're gonna drag it up. And we're gonna drag this point here and drag it down. So what we're doing is we're changing the way our gradient works. So our gradient's gonna kinda of come from the top and go down to the bottom a little bit. And you notice on the dissolve, the wipe is changing. It's going from the top down to the bottom, just matching our gradient right there. Okay, so how can we get the blocky look? To do that, we're gonna use the mosaic blur. It's really simple to do. With background one selected, hit control space and search for mosaic blur and add that in. And in the inspector, we're gonna change the pixel frequency, bring that down. Um, let's put mosaic blur in the viewer right here. We'll hit one. And you can already start to see the little uh, blocks that it's creating. Let's bring it all the way down quite a bit right there. So the dissolve is using this gradient pattern, this gradient blocky pattern to do the transition. So let's look at dissolve one and you can see it's transitioning right there with the blocks. The black transitioned first and the white is transitioning last. So those blocks are interesting, but I wanted something a little more random that we could do a bit more with. Okay, so let's get rid of this background. We're gonna make something a little more interesting. We're gonna use a fast noise. We're gonna take the fast noise and put it into the mosaic blur. And this is gonna help us create more of a random pattern. So with fast noise selected, you can play with all of these options, but we're gonna crank up the contrast, which is gonna make the more of a difference between the light and dark. Actually, let's uh, make this black so it's a little bit easier to see. We're gonna take the alpha and bring it all the way up. So we have our dark spots and then our white spots. And let's just see what happens without making any changes here. On the dissolve, we're gonna take the background down and the black areas of this image should start transitioning first and the white area is gonna transition last. So let's start sliding this over the right. And you notice that right where this black pattern is, we're getting a transition and we're gonna keep on going. We're into the grayscale now 
and the last part that transitions is this white part here. So what we've done is created a block transition that follows our mosaic blur. So if we want more blocks, we just go to the mosaic blur and bump up the pixel frequency. If we want fewer, we can bring it down. Now, the you see this pattern is, is pretty big right now. If we wanted more spottiness and not big chunks, we hit the fast noise and we're gonna go to the main tab here and just crank up the scale. And you'll see that it becomes a lot more random. So let's see what the dissolve looks like now. So with the fast noise, we can actually create a lot of different effects. So let's go to the type here. And this is where playing around with the fast noise and the different um, styles can get you some really interesting looks. So we're gonna go to a gradient style and let's just choose a radial type. And we can choose the start and end points. And you'll notice that it's dark in the middle and we're gonna go out all I'm doing here is adjusting the beginning and ending points of our gradient. You'll see that the blocks are going to be expanding from the middle. Back to the fast noise. Let's, let's show you what some of these things do. The contrast is where you're going to see the biggest difference here. If we bring the contrast down, that's going to remove the difference between the lightest and darkest points. So it's going to be a little bit more smooth. If we bring it up, there's going to be more contrast between the dark and light spots. So it's going to be more blocky. So if we wanted to create a transition going from left to right, what we could do, let's go to the fast noise, go to the color tab, we're going to choose a linear gradient and we're going to take these points and let's move this one all the way to the left. We'll take this point right here and move it all the way, all the way to the right. Go to the fast noise and let's bring down the contrast a little bit and you'll see what happens. By adjusting the contrast, you can see that this is going to be a lot smoother transition and the more, more contrast we have, the more blockier it's going to be with distinctions between the light and dark area. And go to the dissolve and this is what we have. We have a transition from left to right. The softness is interesting because that's kind of the fade in for each of these blocks. So if we go like this, you'll see that they're kind of fading in a little bit. If we take the softness all the way down, the block is just gonna pop in like that with no fading. So it's kind of a different kind of effect you can do. Okay, now we have the animation set up. We want to animate it. Um, that's really easy to do. All we need to do is go um, to the dissolve in the inspector, right click on background foreground, choose modify with anim curves. That's gonna automatically animate the background foreground property over the time of the composition. Okay, let's set up the grid. My first thought was to use the grid node, but I didn't like the way that looked. Let me show you. Got the grid node in here, put that in the viewer. It allows you to make some adjustments uh, with height on each of the grid rows and cells, but it had this line that went around the outside. And I wasn't sure, I didn't look too hard, but I did not find a way to remove that. And I don't want this line around the borders. So I decided to use um, some shape nodes. So let me show you what I did. Okay, let's click on the mosaic blur and we'll see the pixel frequency. So we're gonna use this property to set the number of columns in our grid. Let's start out with five. So we have five columns here. Let's select dissolve one and add a merge node. So we're gonna use the shape tools to do this. So we'll go to the effects library, open up tools and find shapes. And these are all the shape nodes. So the first thing we need to do is add a S render. This is a shape render. All of the shape nodes are gonna plug into the render here. We'll take that render and put it into the merge and we'll put the merge in the viewer. So the first shape we're gonna use is a rectangle. So we'll take this S rectangle and connect it into the S render. We're gonna set the height to one and we're gonna bring down the width. Okay, now we're gonna use some expressions to set the position. So we know that, uh, let's see, scroll this over. It looks like the very left hand edge is negative 0.5. Where you, we have five columns. So each column is going to be 20% of the way across the screen. And we can get that by dividing one by the total number of columns, which is five. Let's go to the mosaic blur and we're gonna pin this so we can reuse this pixel frequency property. Go to the S rectangle and for the X offset, let's right click on that and choose expression. So it's negative 0.5, but we want it to be 20% of the way over. We're gonna say plus one divided by the pixel frequency. So to get that, we take this little plus hold down and drag to pixel frequency. And there we go, it's mosaic blur one dot pixel frequency. And you can see that the line has moved over. So now we just need to use a duplicate node and make copies of this and space it over each one 20%, which is the one divided by the pixel frequency. So we're gonna, with rectangle one selected, we're gonna hit control space and search for S duplicate. So for the number of copies, let's right click on that. We're gonna choose expression and we're gonna drag it down to the pixel frequency. So we're gonna have five copies for starters. We're gonna change this in just a second and then we can use the X offset. So now we just need to figure out how much to offset it to get everything to line up. So we're gonna right click on this expression and we're gonna do one divided by our pixel frequency again. So you can see we have our five sections. Now I don't want this last line here and there's really one further out than that. So we're just gonna subtract two from the uh, pixel frequency right up here in the copies. So coming out of the duplicate node, we're gonna add a shape merge and S merge node. So we'll click on that and we're gonna put the 
horizontal lines into this one. So let's add another rectangle and take this rectangle and bring it into the merge. We're gonna set the width at one and we want the height to match the width of rectangle one. So let's right click on height expression. We're going to enter s rectangle one dot width. And there we go. So we can go to the first rectangle. As we adjust the width, all the lines are going to have the same size. Okay, now let's position our horizontal line. Now this one is a little bit different. Um, let's scroll back out here. So when we go to the rectangle, we're gonna adjust the Y offset, obviously similar like we did with the X offset, but the top of the screen is different. If we move it up to the 0.5, that's gonna be way off the screen. And that's because the aspect ratio of the image is not square. So what we need to do is compensate for the width and height to get the correct aspect ratio. So let's right click on the Y offset expression and we're gonna set it to 0.5. Now that's way off the screen. What we need to do is get the height to width ratio to subtract down to put the line right on top of there. To do this, you can go to my website, buildjustice.com. In a resources area, I have a thing called Fusion Expressions Cheat Sheet. So if we click on that, we can scroll down and you can see that there's some uh, expressions down here to get the height and width of the composition. So we're gonna use these to create our ratio. So we're gonna do 0.5 times the height divided by the width. And then we have the line is right at the top. And all we need to do is add the percentage based on the pixel frequency. So we're gonna to go to the very end of this. And in this case, we're gonna subtract off one divided by the pixel frequency. So we grab this here. We still have the pixel frequency um, pinned. So let's go to connect it to the pixel frequency. And there we have our line. Now let's make our duplicate, just like before. Control space S duplicate. For the copies, we're gonna to go to expression and we're gonna do pixel frequency. And the Y offset, we're gonna right click on that expression and it's gonna be one divided by our pixel frequency. And this one we need to do negative one because it's going the opposite direction. So now once we have the setup, this grid is gonna be controlled. It's gonna be controlled by the mosaic blur. So we can go to the pixel frequency and as we bump that up, you can see our grid is gonna get bigger and smaller. So let's set it at like uh, 20 for now and make it a little bit smaller. Now obviously we could take this grid and we could colorize it and do all kinds of things. We could use this uh, merge here to fade it out a bit. Um, lots of different things you can do. So I want to show you here the problem that I encountered um, and see if you guys figured it out before we got this far from some of the examples. Let's go into the mosaic blur and we're going to change our pixel frequency. Let's make it like uh, 30. Okay, you see everything Everything lines up. The grid is lining up with the mosaic, with the mosaic blur, but let's set it to like 29. And there's the problem. The mosaic blur is not matching up with the grid. And it's, it kind of jumps around. So if you do 26, you can see that this one is just slightly off there. Um, anyway, that's the problem. So if you guys know what that might be, I kind of have some ideas. I didn't really dig into it a whole lot, but I thought it was kind of interesting. Let me know. So that's the basic grid setup along with the grid transition using the mosaic blur along with fast noise. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, maybe learned a little bit from Fusion, or maybe this is an effect that you can use in your videos. Um, I really appreciate everyone's support. If you enjoy my videos and want to learn more about DaVinci Resolve and see what I have coming up next, make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, and comment below to let me know how I'm doing. Thanks for watching.